Hi, and welcome to Worlds Overrun uh, live stream. With me today is my team. Uh, we've got uh, James McCann, Doug, Christopher Hirschberger. We're missing uh, Sebastian also on the sidelines, our uh, Murphy, uh, our uh, writer and editor, and <clears throat> Lee Wanika Miller, who's also a writer and editor for us uh, with a focus in uh, uh, du uh, Dungeon Master and uh, 5e and gaming. Um, we're about to close our Kickstarter. We wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about some of the stuff that we're doing, maybe show you a couple of things that are going to be coming out shortly. And uh, yeah, um, so here we are. And showing up just a little bit late is Sebastian. He's probably having technical difficulties, but we'll have him in a minute. Um, excuse me. Uh, there he is. Hey. hey. Look so, what a cat dragged in. So real quick, we're going through some of our assets and getting them cut up and supported. I'm going to show you guys... Uh, Beefcake, our Parasaurolophus, and just show you guys some of the supports that we're uh, setting up for him. Well, maybe not his supports, but his uh, his model. So I'm going to show you guys that real quick. And there we go. Ooh, one Beefcake. So I'm just going to explode this. I'm getting a little bit of a getting a glitch where it's uh, hiding the parts as I move. Oh, you've got a dynamic solo turned on. Uh, how do I turn that off? Uh, under the solo button there, you click uh, the turn off the dynamic, you unclick the dynamic a little bit there. Ah, all right. Some people love that. I hate I, that option. Oh, God, I hate that. <laughs> I've turned it on by accident far too many times. So just you guys, just so you guys know, the the naming convention will have his nickname in it, but it is Parasaurolophus Beefcake, and then show the different parts that we're doing. Somebody listening to something in the background? All right. Um, I wanted to show you guys some of the cut up that we're doing on him. So, for instance, this is the head, and you can see we're using our small dragon. Hey, small dragon. So Gil is with us again. Gil, he's a friend of mine from the Styrene Syndicate, a painting and modeling group. And he's always been very supportive of the work that we're doing. Uh, real quick, this is the this is the uh, head for the Parasaurolophus, or Beefcake. And we're using a uh, advanced key with draft angles. Draft angles are always a good thing. The midsection or chest, that's labeled as the chest. This is labeled as the hips. This is gonna have most of the female components. And then the tail and the legs. I wanted to show you guys all the, sort of the base that we did. We went through uh, a couple of iterations of how to do the base and how to get really nice uh, mud uh, impressions uh, for the footprints. Uh, I'm hoping that no one will have to uh, pin set this. We did a little checks with some balances. We talked about the, this with the team a couple of times. But these bases are all supposed to give you just that little extra uh, uh, display setup so that if you wanted to do any modding, uh, like Chris did for our portals Kickstarter, where you can put grasses or flocking or um, uh, any other sort of additional components into the base, uh, you know, you should be able to do that pretty easily uh, with just the, the little quick setup that we have here. Uh, we're going to be giving this guy out with our mailing list. He comes free with anybody that's contributed to the Kickstarter. Um, I also have uh, a version of him where we've got gear on him. This is going to have a slightly different show you guys some of this. Yeah, if you guys haven't signed up for the mailing list yet, go do it because no. free beefcake. Yes. I forgot about that. Dinosaur. One free dinosaur. One free beefcake. One free huge beefcake. Yeah. <laughs> he is a beefy boy. So 
what we're going to do with this one is <clears throat> now I don't have this one cut up here, but um, because I've been setting it up and then deleting the cut up, this one is going to have it so that the cut seam is hidden behind the strap here. We have another seam that's hidden along this strap here. And then one more seam uh, back through here, but they have the same leg cut up. Also, the, the gear will come as a separate component, which we've already separated and got figured out uh, down here, where it will come in two parts so you can assemble it and attach it to uh, the animal. Uh, still a few small things that we need to take care of on this. But, uh, guys, we're going through all of our modeling trips, uh, tr tricks, excuse me. We're doing all of our modeling tricks to get you guys uh, some of the best cut up and or uh, layout for our given models. All the models will come pre-supported. <clears throat> it's a given. Um, we're going through that process right now. Hopefully by the time we close the Kickstarter, we should be able to get the beefcake model out. We're doing a few things to double check it. We're trying to get through some pre-supports right now. We're actually trying a new software for so, uh, for supporting models, so we haven't really uh, settled on the end result yet. Um, but hopefully within, when does the Kickstarter close? In how many hours? Does anybody know? In about 15. In about 15 hours. I think we have 15 hours to go. Give or take 15 to 30 hours, I'll have this model ready, and it will go out as our... Um, as our freebie to the people that backed us, that supported us, that signed up for the mailing list. Uh, pretty much everybody and anybody can get this model. It doesn't take a lot. Um, we're still looking for people to promote the project and talk about the project and get more content uh, visual, uh, visually seen out there in the community. Um, but yeah, um, this is what we've been working on. Um, but this is what I've been working on. The other guys are working on other things. In fact, we opened up the loading dock uh uh what's the word stretch goal. thank you and uh uh my man sebastian started working on that this morning with the crane we actually looked at that and discussed it we're really excited about that he's pumping that out uh doug is actually working on a couple of the dinosaurs we're we're actually <clears throat> banging through these things and trying to get everything ready for you so that when when all the funding goes through in about 15 days after the Kickstarter ends, we should be able to send out the majority or the bulk of the content uh, in about 15 days. We really try to make sure that our projects are front-loaded enough that the the majority of the content goes out uh, at the end of the project or at the, at the delivery of the funding. So if you guys uh, haven't already signed up for the Kickstarter, please do so. If you guys are waiting for the, um, uh, it's not backer kit anymore. It's uh, what do we call it? Uh, my mini factory. Yeah, my mini factory pledge manager. Our pledge manager. Please sign up for the pledge manager um, if you're interested and you want to get uh, a late pledge in. We're also accepting those. Um, I believe we're going to be opening stretch goals through the pledge manager. Yes. yes. So that's a nod. Yes, that's an approval. Um, so we will still be having stretch goals through the pledge manager. And we're going to run into the pledge manager uh, for an extended period of time. We're only about uh, $80 off from unlocking the first of the uh, backer choice. Which backer choice is the next one? Do we know? Um, looks like it is Dino Nest with Eggs. One. Seriously? Yeah, All right. Dino Nest with Dino eggs. eggs. All right. So I guess Dino Nest with Eggs is our back of choice. Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to say this. Uh, uh, Jeremy came up with a recommendation for that one. Jeremy came up with a recommendation. So Jeremy Gozer uh, uh, over at Gamescape 3D uh, has always been very supportive. We worked with him a couple of times. He came up with a suggestion for that one. I also want to say uh, Ian wrote something uh, really amazing about the project and about uh, the, the community support that we've gotten for this project uh, last night. Uh, it kind of blew my mind. I really want to say thank you to Ian for his generosity and kind words. Um, that was pretty amazing. He's also running a Kickstarter at this time. Um, and you can check his stuff out at Gamescape yeah. 3D. Yeah, and you can right, check. That was Gamescape 3D's Jeremy. Uh, right. Yeah. 
Um, did we unlock everything for the by chance? Did, did we lock out everything for the land train by chance? I say, did the rest of the social goals get met? I'm not I sure. Give that did. Anyway, uh, other than the dinosaurs, there is the land train stuff, which truthfully was a huge undertaking by uh, uh, Doug and um, Sebastian. Uh, they really bust their butts on that. And a lot of people don't know that the land train is there because they're not looking at everything on the Kickstarter. But I believe in the uh, updates, uh, you can see a full photo of the majority of the land train. We have added things to the land train. Um, I got to tell you, that was one of the more exciting things that we've come up with. And we've also been hearing some people talking about, can we have this for the land train? Can we have that for the land train? We've actually added it to our uh, whiteboard of things that we're going to be looking at developing um, going forward. Uh, can't make any promises because there's always stuff that we do already have scheduled for the rest of the year. Uh, but that is some of the stuff that uh, we are talking about uh, developing because it is requested. Um, what do you guys got? Um, I actually have the, uh, I've got the animal uh, cart pulled up here. If I'll share my screen here. Do, 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 actually, do. Before, before you do, Chris, did you want to talk about this guy that's on the screen now or no? No, we're good. We're good. Okay, never mind then. Yeah, I'm still in the middle Fair of the it's, it's, it's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> Chris's idea is fun. Okay, moving on. Go ahead, Doug. Yeah. Okay. So sharing this guy here. This was the. Uh, this was one of the stretch goals. It's uh, for, it goes with the land train. It's the animal cart. Which look at that. It fit the Stegosaurus in there. Yeah, you can. Oh, other fun aspect with it is that let me just go here i'm going to turn him off the uh it's designed so that the door is open and uh i like working with hinges like this where we all anyone who's printed with an fdm printer has leftover bits of um filament from when you change out your filament when your filament runs out you got that just that little like foot to two foot piece that is basically useless for pretty much anything. Well, I've designed it around using that as a little uh, hinge pin here. You drop it in there and uh, fits through there. So you can use those extra little things for a hinge pin to have your uh, slidey doors. Also for some of the taller dinosaurs, you've got the lid here that is Totally removable, so you can have, you know, a nice tall dinosaur in there. Openable doors to go with your uh, land train. I'm super excited for this because the land train was fun to design, and uh, now you can transport dinosaurs when they're not being ridden or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we also use the same system for the plate pin. So it makes it easier for everybody to just, you know, you guys have filament laying around, put it in there, boom, you know. Yeah, the, the play pin is the name that we kicked around for the uh, dinosaur yeah, pin. That's, so, that's, yeah. that's a little <laughs> area for them. <laughs> um, and that, that one you did open lock compatible, right? And I did open lock compatible, absolutely. Yep. So all you guys yeah, so, got that. So you don't have to just use it as a, a animal pen or a paddock. You can you can actually use it for, for other aspects of, uh, of uh, gaming if you need it. Um, I want to mention this, too. We, we actually came up with a couple of standards for ourselves for the hitching system for the, uh, the different uh, train cars. Um, that was really kind of interesting because um, we thought about going male, female, male, female. Uh, but instead, we actually made all of the... Uh, cars having female ends and then we have an attachment that uh, interlocks between them which is just a little bit easier because then you can turn the cars backwards and forwards depending on which car uh, you want to make so they don't necessarily have a front or a back uh, direction um, which is kind of nice it makes them a little bit more versatile 
beefcake. No, wait, this is um, this is our uh, this is our sauropod. Well, while we've been doing this, we added a couple more people. We're really close to that nine thousand uh, for that next uh, stretch goal unlock for that that choice. We're almost there. Uh, yeah, one of the one of the guys has said uh, besides dino sets, I'm really into the wagon caravan. Actually, I would be happy to pay extra to get them all if the social goals can't be reached. Well. We'll have to see where we're at. Personally, I think that everybody should be out there telling their buddies, telling their friends, doing whatever they can to control uh, people to help us reach those social goals. Social goals are the only way we can. They're not the only way, but they're one of the better ways that we can get people to do word of mouth uh, 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 promotion for the for the project. Uh, that way, more people see it, more people know about it, and it becomes. Um, uh, easier for us to market and and promote yeah. the content that we're trying to get out there pretty uh, much tell everybody you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care if you have to have your grandma sign up for yeah. a, a social shout media out account out for Patreon, sign up for everything. <laughs> yeah yeah shout out to your grandma yeah. shout out to your grandma you know because you know hey my grandma loves these things Oh my gosh! Can you tell the story about the piece that Grandma? Oh, uh, uh, the 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 one of the one of the original terrain pieces from Grove when we first got it. I uh, I showed I showed my grandmother this piece and she she just kind of fell in love with it. So it ended up being that I painted it up and gave it to her, and it now actually just sits on the mantle. <laughs> I love Chris's grandma just for that because because yeah. <laughs> Chris Chris and I tossed the design around and then I went and built it and then he went and painted it and she was just like this is mine now and Can I was just it? like I was like that is the that was the coolest thing that was the coolest thing for me because um, we do try and make things that that tell a story or at least have some appeal. Um, uh, I, I like to think of things that we make that they're, they're beautiful. They have surface language. They have all the artistic things that I, that I went to school for. Um, but it's even cooler when somebody who's not a gamer and just appreciates it for its aesthetic or for, for, yeah, um, yeah that just, that just really makes me so happy. So yeah. Ian's back. Yeah. Ian's going to talk to us <laughs> later. He's got some notes he wants to give us for some marketing stuff. Ian, Ian had some some thoughts, so we're, he's going to send me some information later. I'm really happy to uh, have him uh, helping us out again. Um, what else, guys? Does anybody have anything else they want to bring up before we close out the Kickstarter in uh, in about 15 hours? Well, you think, were um, um, mentioning. Uh, how we had uh, come up with a, uh, for the land train, a new standard for that. I've, I've got pulled up over here, the hitch system. Oh, do you? Yeah, I pulled it up. Didn't okay. Take it. So what we ended up doing on all of the land train pieces is that we came up with a fun little hitch system here where, you know, yeah, there we go. You've got, just got, uh, keep hiding the wrong pieces. <laughs> so you've got these uh, hitches. That these are attached to all of the trains. And then you've got the hitch pin there that drops hold them all together, which, you know, you've got a bunch of them right here. Then you just print out a bunch of these. Hitch up as many of the trains, uh, train cars as you want, and then you know. Show it again, Doug. Oh yeah. yeah. So you got you know, a bunch of these little uh, hitches. Do do do. But then you. Hey, look at that. There we go. And that that's designed so that it shouldn't bind up. You should be able to get uh, almost uh, what a little bit more than ninety degrees uh, rotation. Yeah, you can uh, rotate farther than you ever did. Yeah. Uh, which go ahead, Doug. Now that you've made that train articulate, move, does everything. What's it going to take for us to make it actually roll? 
A billion dollars. One million dollars. <laughs> That's right. Choo choo. Uh, <laughs> choo choo. <laughs> it's doable. Uh, it, it, it would just have to take some reengineering on the cut up. Uh, the way these we have to the soft it in there so it it's doesn't something. roll around on the table. Yeah. But I could do that at some point. <laughs> oh, we just hit 9K. Yeah. Oh, we did. <laughs> That goal is unlocked. We're doing. Uh, we are doing some dinosaur nests with some eggs. All I guess right. I should get on that later. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've had quite a few requests about the um, train to actually roll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I've been tallying them. Actually, one hundred and thirty-two requests. Uh, that is a lot so of requests for rolling. After videos. this Kickstarter is completed, that is on your to-do list, Doug. <laughs> I'll work yep. with you on I'll work with you on that, Doug. We'll we'll figure it out. Definitely. The big eggs. We will Good. put all the big yep. eggs in the nest. Gotta, so gotta give the fans eggs. what the fans want. <laughs> I I shall do that. Um yeah, the I when I cut those up, I'd I socketed the wheel so they were static because I thought, hey, I don't want it rolling around on my table. Exactly. Like, if people want them to roll. It'll be the matter of removing the socket and um, just changing up the way the axle mounts. Exactly. Or if you're big into customization like what I do, you could just pin set it or drill it out and just run a rod through those wheels because those wheels print solid anyway. That's kind of how I was planning on doing it. Yeah, I'd just be like, <laughs> hey, they won't roll it yet. Sub to the Patreon, and I'll make rolling wheels. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> it will probably be a Patreon request, I mean, add on to the list for the community to choose. Yeah. And when the community demands it, we will do it. Yeah, so uh, as you can see, this is the standard we got there, which then down here, hey, look at that. There's that hitch we were talking about. Ta-da! Just drops right in. Fun thing yeah, and is that um, we, uh, Jeremy, we were talking earlier about Jeremy Gozer, uh, Gamescape 3D. He had recently did his uh, very successful Roads to Adventure Kickstarter, and um, we had given that uh, we had you know because we're good friends, given them a couple carts and. So actually, some land train. Oh, uh, we one of them was a land train cart, right? I believe so. Yes. Yeah, and so we did that, and some of the uh, carts that he designed yeah. for his stuff as well use the um, this alternate. Thing. They use the the the, the, uh, the train hitch. Yes. So we and will we have... develop that so that we can expand on it in the future. Right. Uh, there's there's actually two two train hitches because one is at a slightly different height uh, to mm -hmm. accommodate things. So we actually have a, an adapter uh, pin, uh, which is the green one in the background. Um, that's to accommodate uh, the different heights. Uh, so if they're at the same height, you use the orange one. If they're at the offset height, use the green one. Uh, but the Gamescape 3D terrain, uh, trains and cars are compatible with the World's Overrun trains and cars. Because we built the hitch for Jeremy and said, yeah. use it. Mm -hmm. we held a gun to his head and uh, yeah. <laughs> like here buddy have free components i mean i don't think anybody says um, no to a lot of other free components <laughs> doing nothing like that so i'm out <laughs> yeah we uh use this little this setup uh platform here to make sure that when we're laying them in they uh are at the same level yeah yeah and, but there's also enough um Make sure there's enough uh, give between the uh, pin and the hitch uh, part itself. So, you know, it's not, you know, a tight fit. It's not going to snap when you uh, put it together. I went through a couple different iterations on this just to get one that just uh, prints very quickly and, you know, isn't going to fall apart. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to know. Um, would you guys like to see the uh, block out the beginnings of the loading dock and crane that Sebastian did? Because I'd like to hear from him. He doesn't get to talk very much. Yeah, I don't talk much. He likes to hide in the background and show pictures, man. I don't. You know. <laughs> I, 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 I think. Yeah, there we go. 
So uh, we're not going to give the dimensions on this. Uh, do we have a miniature in here in this file? Uh, let me pull it up. And we will. So this is designed so that if you wanted to uh, load a couple of dinosaurs or load a couple of land trains, uh, you have a crane and you have a couple of platforms. These Now, this is a block out. This is how we start a model. We start out with dimensions. And we then figure out the layout. And we sometimes talk about the cut up. And when this is done, it's going to have, it's going to look like it's made out of uh, stacked stones and wood pillars and so on and so forth. But Sebastian, go ahead and talk to us about the, uh, the loading dock. Yeah, so uh, we have the system um, that we're going to be able to rotate. So you guys will be able to have some motion. Um, I have set it up where uh, you guys will be able to rotate anything all the way through six, 360 degrees. So that way you guys can have any fun moving around dinosaurs and crates and barrels and whatever you guys want to put in there. However, however you guys want to set it up, um, but just like Eric mentioned, um, you know, this is just going to be made up of those sections uh, with, you know, probably cobblestone or some rocks. Um, but it's going to be very fun, and so and it'll be open lock. It's going to be open lock, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now, moving that, around uh, barrels. That piece it's almost you gotta, like we've got uh, lots of barrels in our project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, real life barrels. You're gonna really need them. Them. Yeah, but that that piece on top that means that you because we're using one of our components that is actually one of the little rotation pieces. It means anything mm -hmm. that we have that has that bottom piece on there. So if you happen to have one of our ballista pieces or any of the other things on the side of beefcake, you could always put them in that that thing's exactly. position since it's all it's all uniform. Yeah, so, so you can you can, can really kind of change it to a lo uh, change the loading dock, yeah, into yeah. you know a weapon dock if you wanted to. Can you drop the sore pot in there, Sebastian? Yeah. You might actually be in that file, maybe. I don't know. I might have to uh, pull it up. So if you guys want to continue talking about something else, and we'll come back to me then, because I have to load it up again. Chris, you've, uh, do you mind talking about your uh, Ankylosaur a little bit or your Triceratops, where we're at with those models? Or Well, the Ankylosaur currently, we've got one, I've got one of the poses, the, the attack pose, completely figured out as far as the, uh, the cut up on that. And we've been messing with that. I've got, I've got one guy here that's been messing with printing it for me to make sure that we don't have any issues. And then uh, I know that uh, James also has has that model at this point and I haven't heard anything else but I don't think that he's had an opportunity to get back to printing it um, we do have a few of his pieces done on that one and they came out great um, so we're just trying to work a couple of uh, hinky kind of hiccups with a, a few of the other pieces um, and then uh, those cuts I've just prepped the file to move them over to the uh, the other version of that and that should go relatively quick so within the next day or so, I should have all those models done, and then it'll be moving on to the Triceratops, which is going to be significantly easier than the Ankylosaur, because he doesn't have a uh, butt-ton of uh, protruding parts sitting off of him. Like oh, what, what are you talking about? He's got, he's got the fan of blade death. He's yeah, but see, those are easy. Those are just a small key, and you just clip them all off and print them as a strip. So, I mean, and then that's going to be good. You just, yeah. You're good there. The Ankylosaur has got like four rows of like pointy stuff that are sticking out bigger than a 28 millimeter character. And you're like, why did I do this to myself? <laughs> the whole time while you're looking at it. Um, so, <coughs> but, uh, his, I yeah, his base is the same. I think that's the uh, Proto. Yeah, that's yeah. a Proto. That's a Proto. Yeah. Super time. Yeah. Yeah. He's so tiny. He is so tiny. Yeah. I can see him running around on the on the loading dock. <laughs> oh, I actually let me pull up. By the way, those those stairs are um, those stairs are from our one of our other kits. So as long as they maintain their standard dimensions, those stairs are going to be uh, playable. Meaning you should be able to put your bases on the stairs and and kind of hook them into the uh, staircases. Yeah, um, open lip on the underside yep it's got a lip on it um we we try and make it that all components are playable uh mostly because we we want them to be that way 
Um, well, some games require them to be. Some games require them to be, and I'm not going to talk bad about people that make stairs that can't be played with, but it bugs me. So I need to make the stairs playable, so that's kind of a standard that we're moving, that we're we, always we looking like to do. pretty and functional. Pretty and functional, yes. <laughs> Which means that we're pretty unfunctional. That means we're definitely dysfunctional. Dis dysfunctional, yes. <laughs> we put the fun in dysfunctional. There you go. <laughs> um, you should try working with uh, seven-year-old Doug. Yes, seven-year-old yeah. Doug. Seven-year-old Doug. <laughs> or or five-year-old Chris. Or five-year-old Chris. <laughs> it is a hard thing. <laughs> There's crayons and walls that need murals and all sorts of stuff that goes on. <laughs> and crying and gnashing of teeth and temper tantrums. I survived raising five children. They're all married and have their own kids now. And then I got these guys. <laughs> <laughs> the world is a complete circle. <laughs> it's um, the circle of life. It's a complete so, circle. And it moves yeah. the soul. Uh, of those people that are participating in the uh, in the stream, um, does anybody have anything that they're interested in knowing about from the team, about the team, about the project, uh, about anything uh, that we've been talking about today or, or in the last few streams? Um, anything dinosaur related? Your anything favorite. dinosaur related? Yeah. And if you don't have none of that, anything that you're interested in us pursuing, making, creating, yeah. give us some ideas. Tell us what you guys want. We like to we like to plan that stuff out well in advance. <laughs> Silence falls over the chat. Yes. Anyway, oh, the, uh, the Protoceratops cart pulled up here now too. It was one of the stretch goals, right? I uh, believe so. I thought that was so, open a long time ago. The the model wasn't completed. Oh. Yeah, we have a work in progress render of it done. But okay. But now we have a completed model. Uh, which reminds me, how Here. how well are our stat sheets coming along? Stat sheets are coming stupid. along well. Uh, me and Lee Winnick are getting together to work out the final stats. By the time the uh, project releases, you know, the files release, we should have them all finished. Sweet, very much. So right. roughly fifteen days from tomorrow. Yeah, fifteen days from tomorrow, give or take yeah. a bit. We'll add, um, the, we'll add to the Kickstarter uh, files a uh, stat file that'll have all the PDFs in it. Awesome, very much. I know a lot of people that, that, that are very excited about that. They were super stoked. I showed some of the guys from our uh, from my local game store uh, the stuff that we were doing, and they were, they were very, very excited about having extra stat sheets with the stuff that specifically go with our dinosaurs. So that's... I was like, yay, dinosaurs. <laughs> that's probably that's probably that's probably some of the best news uh, I've heard today uh, with with everything that's going on. That's amazing, Chris. Yep. Um, I can't wait to see a table with our dinosaurs at your game oh, shop. Right. Yeah, yeah covered covered it. Yeah, um, I've got a request for three sets of every dinosaur from each of my grandchildren. That's a lot of damn dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're gonna be printing a while. Yeah, <laughs> my my nieces and nephews have requested them too. It's crazy. Okay, it's so like, I'm, it's like my son-in-law said, it gives yeah. it allows him to introduce his kids to tabletop gaming, and they have fun with it. Yeah, like I say, is, my nieces are going to be excited about the dinosaurs when I show them. That is the coolest thing ever. Um, also, uh, just so you guys know, we did have a comment brought up um, about a couple of our bases. Um, the bases are uh, the base. What two of the bases uh, for for say for instance the, the Smilodon um, and uh, one of our other bases. They're they're a little extra thick. Uh, we just haven't finished leveling those, so all of the bases will get leveled. Uh, so you'll have the standard uh, beveled uh, four millimeter beveled base with a bit of terrain on top. Um, so if you see a double thick base, guys, we are getting ready to modify those or finish those. <clears throat> we just rendered them before they were. Just complete. FYI, we, since Doug came on the team, we've modified our bases. There is a slight 45 degree uh, bevel at the bottom, inverted, mm -hmm. so then you can print your bases flat. 
on a uh, resin printer without it warping and it makes it easier to pop it off. Right. There is that as well. Um, we are trying to, as we work through the different pieces, as we test print uh, the occasional thing, if we do run into an issue, we are also trying to modify uh, the pieces so that they're a little bit more manageable for the end user at the end of the day. Um, we don't want to give you guys headaches. problems. Headaches, we wanna, yeah. Wanna, yeah, we want to give you things that you can drop in there and just run and be excited about and not have to do the technical stuff because that's our job. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We want and when it comes to the bases, um, well, I, I like, especially for games where the dimensions of the base matter, uh, um, printing a, a base, you know, if this is a bill plate, printing it like, you know, at an angle to it, I found that sometimes you'll get that little puckering at the bottom. So I you know, like to print them flat on the bill plate. Um, but I put a little, we, as we've said, we put a little bevel knee underneath there so that you can still get your uh, scraper off and pop it right off. And then they are, end up being dimensionally accurate mm -hmm. uh, without, it, without any warping. Yeah, and that's very right. important in a lot of games. Yeah, the other key thing about these are too is that these bases are completely optional. All the animals will print without the base. So if you have specific bases you would like to put them on, you do not have to use our bases. We just like to offer something for people who aren't going to be looking for something very specific in that in that exactly. area. Um, I just want for you guys to modify it, change it up. Yep, Whatever absolutely. You, do, you know, make your own world with our with with this stuff. Yeah, and we love the custom stuff. So oh, yeah. the more you guys that print them without the bases or add to the bases, we want to see the cool stuff that you guys do with our models because that's yes. that's exciting to us to see things that we've made in the computer get printed out and then have people holding them and play with them, playing with them, and and loving these things. That's that's what we live for for doing this. Right. I do want to with the community. Post on our Facebook page, post on our Facebook group, post on any of the 3D printing groups, but share so everyone gets to enjoy what you do. Absolutely. We, uh, I love seeing when someone else has taken a model that I've done and printed it out and painted it up. It just, it, my, my heart grows like three sizes or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an amazing, an amazing effect. Um, I want to bring something up about finishing, guys. Um, now, my personal preference for finishing is to uh, use sandpaper to get, uh, get rid of sprues and clean up a model. But I found a few, uh, few years back, I found something that I find to be really excellent for cleaning up models. Uh, other than like a, an expensive tool, sanding twigs. That's what these are actually called. They're called sanding twigs. Some people refer to them as sanding sticks. It's basically a piece of foam core with sandpaper glued on two sides. And they can be cut, so they can be cut down. This is pro by far my personal favorite tool for cleaning up um, sprue marks or, or, or support marks. Uh, now I know some people like to use a myriad of other things. Um, I'm really surprised at how well these work on most resins without creating a real mess and without a lot of fuss. Um, and I use a couple of different things, too, that are also awesome. Uh, I haven't had an opportunity yet to mess with the sanding sticks, but I have a set of files, like small end, almost jeweler level files that I use on stuff, mm. as well as like uh, uh, additional sandpapers that I will typically clip down. But having it on a foam core would definitely make it a lot easier to use in some some instances. So that kind of that kind of stuff is is things that I'm looking into as well for improving my own hobby crafting for this show. Yeah, they come in a couple of different grades, but what's really great about it is you just take it like so, and you push it against your model, and I, I don't have a model on hand, but I'll take a piece of plastic here, and you can basically just scuff the edge off, and then it starts to wear down. You either flip it over and use the other side, or you take a pair of uh, scissors and clip the end off, and it works really, really well. It is somewhat flexible. You can see I can bend it very, very easily. Um, Probably one of the cheapest uh, tools in my toolkit um, that has so much power and versatility for cleaning up uh, support and sprue marks. Um, <clears throat> the guys, some of the guys that taught me 
recommended this over a lot of other things. Um, I'm not going to talk bad about anybody else's techniques or tools or whatever, but I really like these. So um, check these out if you get a chance. And they're, they're cheap. I think a packet of 20. I got a, a variety pack of 20. I don't think it cost me more than five bucks. So surprisingly first. Yeah. Surprisingly versatile. Um, we do want to share this knowledge with you as well, guys. It's not just about, hey, we made a bunch of bottles, buy our stuff. It's also about, you know, how do we how do we improve uh, how do we improve both the stream content creation? Uh, I'm going to have Chris talk about painting and modding at some point. We're going to talk about the different putties that we use because he and I argue constantly over <laughs> epoxy sculpt versus green stuff. No uh, 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 yeah. Actually, I think Chris said that he mixed Milliput and green stuff recently and got some results that he really found to his liking. Um, yep. Madman! The I know. Stuff I mixed two, two epoxies, two two-part epoxies together for that stuff. Not only did it increase the work time that I had to work with it by a significant amount, because I want to say you get between, depending on how well or how long you mix them, about 15 to maybe 30 minutes if you're really stretching it on mix the two of them together i had almost you know between 45 minutes and an hour before it actually hardened up to the point where i couldn't do anything with it so nice. it, it did a lot of really cool stuff because mixing the two epoxies since it's a chemical reaction slows the reaction down significantly because it still has to they have to interact with the other components in there so yay chemistry and i'm glad it didn't blow up <laughs> <laughs> burst into flames um Speaking, speaking of that, Chris and I were actually talking quite a bit last night about uh, uh, gluing down um, the model that he was working on, uh, the the um, um, the Ankylosaurus, yeah. And we both we both mentioned that there is a solvent for cyanoacrylate glue or or um, uh, super super glue is the brand name. That most people are familiar with, we know that that's not going to affect your resin 3D prints. So if you do glue down a part and you don't like it, go look up what the uh, solvent is. It'll break down just the cyanoacrylate, and you should be able to take those apart too. So don't worry if you get stuck. So in between, yeah, in addition to that, there's also accelerants, but the accelerant is basically just highly concentrated uh, isopropyl. So you can just get that and put it in a little squirt bottle and squirt the uh, squirt the uh, outside edge once you put them together and it'll like rapid set for you. Um, it, that's a trick I learned a long time ago. <laughs> I've also so heard like, that baking baking it. soda is it baking soda? If you're using baking soda, use it yep. in a well ventilated area because it produces toxic gas. Okay, yeah. so don't do that. Do not use baking soda and cyanoacrylate, please. We do not encourage. It's, it's an old model airplane. It's a model airplane trick where you, they'd fill it with. Um, that explains a lot. <laughs> with uh, with Maybe baking soda and then put cyanoacrylate on it because it does. It sets up very very hard. Yeah, you basically get like a cement out of it. But it's toxic. Yeah. So don't do that. So yeah. don't do that yeah. inside. Let's just not do that at all. Don't do that. No. There you go. <laughs> Without adult supervision. Um, there are some adults that need adult supervision, Doug. Hey, I'm an adult. I'll watch. <laughs> I'll encourage from the sidelines while wearing a respirator. Anyway. Um, <laughs> hey, 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 Chris. I'm going to come visit you and uh, go do that uh, in your yard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so I want to, uh, I want to, I want to start closing this up. I want to thank everybody that's come out and participated with the Kickstarter, everybody that's been able to comment and communicate with us, everybody that's been able to promote our project and get the word out uh, about the dinosaurs, the Beast of Burden project that we're doing. Um, I also really need to thank, um, all the members of my team, uh, Lee Winika and Murphy, who aren't here today, uh, James, who does almost all of our back end stuff, um, <clears throat> Doug and Sebastian, who are new associates to uh, the, the Worlds Overrun brand, 
my very good friend Chris, who's been doing a lot of the design work and picking up a lot of the slack uh, to help get things designed and looking pretty. Uh, he's done a little Not our slack, not our slack. <laughs> um, I'm going to well, say this. It makes it easier because I get very pretty renders from Sebastian, which then I take to the next level of pretty because he makes me some very sexy renders. And then I come in here and I jazz them up with some polish and we show everybody. <laughs> so it's a group effort, really, because, you know, without the awesome models that our, our whole team is making, um, you know, every every one of us on here has very unique strengths and playing to each of those has allowed us to put out a superior product for all of you guys. Um, one of the things that I'm very impressed with is um, like Doug's ability to build things in a modular fashion so that we can reuse those parts in very easy ways that are um, not only easy for our end user, but also easy for us as designers to be able to incorporate into things like doing the barrels, hitches, that kind of stuff. Making pieces and components that are um, easily usable are amazing. I mean, with Eric, we've got some amazing sculptural um, knowledge in a, in a base that, you know, as far as as far as I'm concerned, he's one of the best sculptors that I've ever met on this stuff. It's just we we all work together in order to create a better project. And then when it comes our to our powers like, combine, exactly, we make like we like Voltron it up in here. So, <laughs> and then you've got Sebastian who does an amazing job at doing the renders. He's also a very talented sculptor himself. Um, his uh. He's got some really cool stuff. You should definitely check out some of his things that he's got on like Etsy. He does a lot of uh, uh, cartoony kind of stuff that I find very. It's a nice. It's a nice reprieve from always doing the realistic looking sculpture stuff. So, um, which actually has inspired me to do more cartoony stuff in my own personal work. So I started working on some other stuff that uh, will eventually come out at some point. <laughs> but I mean, with our our whole team is just great. And especially with like James tying everything together. And I've been working very closely, mainly with, with James and everybody else on the team in order to make sure that I can present the work that we're all doing in the best possible light. Um, and it really, it just comes down to everybody having a voice and everybody being able to put their, their input in on it and then us running with something that's, that's awesome. Oh man, I, I, I absolutely love that model right I can't wait to see that model. Like Triceratops. I can't wait to see him covered with his with his uh, blade fringe. Oh, his armor. oh God, that's He's insane! <laughs> Yay, war team! I'm, I I can't wait for that pose with the armor. That's yeah. the pose that I'm excited about because that, that took a lot of a lot of thinking in order to get to something that that looked like that. <laughs> So, um, uh, oh, I hadn't seen the renders of this guy yet. Yeah, that's Sebastian. Now, now this model, this model is part of our uh, expansion set. This is not yet available, uh, but we are already talking and showing these things. Not a, none of them are truly ready to be uh, committed yeah, to yet. Part there part are going to be changes. Correct. Right. This yeah. is the herbivore pack. Yep. Herbivore uh, herd. Herbivore herd. It's, a, it's one of the two expansion packs that we we had a lot of people asking for things that we we originally had planned for another Kickstarter, but we're trying to uh, tack it on to the end of this project because so many people were eager to to get those models. Um, so you you have, we're sending it to you. Yep. Give us a little bit of time. We'll we'll be getting those things out as well. Those are going to take. I believe so. Um, 60 yeah, days is what James is saying. Yeah, we need we need time to develop and finish the sculptures. Right now they're in they're in the either in the blockout stage or the early rough out stage. Mm -hmm. But they will be available in the as add out add ons, right? Add -ons. Yes. Add -ons. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And but, these were popular dinosaurs by demand through the interactions that we had with people via all of our other streams and stuff and also on the Kickstarter. So being vocal about the things that you want from us will cause us to actually make them for you. Um, so the more people that wanna that want something, the more likely the the more it gets pushed up on our priority list. If we got a lot of that's a bunch. Yep. And we'll make what you want. Exactly. 
Uh, this may be a little hard to read for some people, but just so you know, these are the three different tail ends for the Ankylosaurus. Uh, I don't remember the names, Chris. Um, uh, he's got a, a sword tail, a double-bladed axe tail, and a, uh, a mace tail. Okay. In that in that order, from left to right on the on the screen. And and we've been talking about recommending to people that they get some neodymium magnets so they can yeah, hop them. There's some very tiny magnets that, that come as a standard thing through either Army Painter or GW that you can also pick up um, in a pack, and that'll make these tails hot swappable if you want to. Um, there's uh, Since each one of these tails, including the plain tail with no uh, weapon attachment on it whatsoever, all have the, um, the male peg on the end of there, you will be able to very easily drill out the end of that and pop in a magnet and then do the same thing on the interior side there with a small Dremel bit because those magnets aren't very big and you don't need a super a super heavy duty one to tack that in place because it won't no. be a heavy piece. But uh, I designed them specifically on purpose so that whichever pose it goes with, they should all be interchangeable. I got to check the stat sheets out for, uh, <laughs> for the damage on those because I think the, the sword tail is going to have <laughs> the sword tail is going to have cutting damage. And the mm -hmm. hammer tail is going to have uh, yeah. blunt damage. Bludgeoning. It should have bludgeoning, yeah. Bludgeoning. And the axe tail is going to be somewhere in between. So. I think it's slashing. <laughs> yeah. Slashing. And those will be piercing damage because ballistas. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I have not gotten this model yet, and we need to, we need to cut this model up. I still have to Okay. Um, <laughs> This model, this model is going to be a bear and a half uh, to to cut up, but uh, yeah. Oh, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this thing because you know, yeah. and the turrets move. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. See, these are the same kind of turrets that we were talking about when we were doing the. Um, it has the same technology in them with the pin and the rotation, so you can actually rotate that all the way around, just like you can on the loading dock. Uh, matter of fact, you could even take these pieces off of there and put them on the loading dock if you really wanted to, or put the crane on one of those if it fits. I'm not 100% sure if it would, though. It looks like it'd be a bit big, and it might be a bit lopsided. But you could definitely put it on there. <laughs> I, I can't remember which... Um, I'd have to... I don't know which of the turret... There's two turret mounts that we've got. I don't know which one uh, Sebastian Yeah, used. Yeah, I'm not sure if you use... Uh, you use the smaller one on this guy, right? Uh, you did, though. Yeah, I think I use the bigger one. Okay. So I don't know that that would necessarily work. You might be able to drop the small one into the big one, but you probably can't put the big one into the small one. I think they might use the same pack. Yeah. We can we can take a look at it. Yeah. We can test it. <laughs> we'll play with it too. Oh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that one's fun. I, I that was that one was fun to design. Oh yeah. That was like at a 2 a.m. where everything sounds good kind of idea. What we had going on there. <laughs> yeah, I probably were, you, shouldn't have eaten that third peanut butter and grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> peanut butter and grilled cheese. I was just trying to come up with something that would only sound good at 2 a.m. <laughs> peanut butter? Not bad. At 2 a.m., uh, Colombian burger. Oh. What's a Colombian burger? Oh, dude, what? Man, you're not there, dude. You're gonna Come have to. <laughs> okay. Not to show you. When when Rona when Rona when Rona goes away, I'll I'll, I'll come visit. Hey Thanks. guys, we're up to two hundred and forty three backers. We gained another three while we've been talking here. Yeah, Ooh, I'm here. We love you, love you people. And Doug's back. back. Doug's back. Bottom. Hey. Doug's back just to, just to close up. All right. So again, I want to say uh, I want to thank my team. Uh, I want to thank my team of extraordinary artists and and individuals. I also want to thank everybody that's come out to support our project, to support my team and my I, and, and I to do this work. Um, we really do appreciate uh, everything that you guys have done for us. The comments, the questions, the the contributions. Um, Again, if you do have more questions, you can hit us up on Kickstarter right now. You can also join our Facebook page if you'd like. Uh, we would love to have you as part of our Patreon because we are trying to grow that uh, part of the, the brand as well if you're interested. Um, Sebastian, any suggestions? Nothing. Sebastian's so done. suggestion is kickstarter.com. We're overrun. Back it. Share it. 
Dinosaur! Yeah, that your gaming, man. Yes. But yes. Oh, and Eric, I, I do want to thank you for bringing me on board for this. Uh, this has been so much fun to do and exciting. And th this is the first uh, Kickstarter that I've been involved in as a, you know, a collaborator on. I've backed many Kickstarters, but my, it's cool to see my artwork getting out there into the world. Yeah, same for me. I, I for, for bringing me in, and, and uh, I, I love hanging out with you guys. You guys are amazing. There are amazing people, amazing uh, individuals that all you guys should get to know um, and, and uh, talk to. Um, awesome. really, we, we, really we wouldn't have gotten this project done as quickly as we have done without uh, the, the members of the team, and it looks like we just lost Chris. But, guys... Um, yeah, we're not going to miss him. <laughs> <laughs> IT... I do want to. I want to want to close this up because this is already right coming up on an hour. Uh, again, I want to thank everybody for coming out and participating with us. Again, if you have questions or if you want to know anything about what we're doing over at Worlds Overrun, please feel free to get in touch with us. That was um, a weird technical difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, like my internet just went bloop, and I was like, "Oh, I guess I guess I'm 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 indivisible now." Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, so uh, 14 hours ago on the Kickstarter, uh, from the time we're closing out this video, um, again, if you want to get in touch with us, uh, Kickstarter, um, Beast of Burden, uh, Worlds Overrun project, uh, it's uh, it's up there, and uh, you can get in touch with us there if you need to. Also, the Patreon, come check out the Patreon. We are starting to uh, build more content for the Patreon. Uh, and uh, yeah, good night, Gracie. <laughs> <laughs> good night, guys. Bye. Good afternoon. Where are you guys at? Thank you. Thanks for all the support. Thank you for the backers. Thank